Hello everyone, this video is going to be about how to use floppy disk images in DOS. I'm going to show you two ways. One way which I don't like too much is using the program called SHSUFDRV and I'm going to be testing that program on the ITX Llama. Another program which is called Turbo Image which I prefer a lot more, I'm going to be testing that in 86 box. And the reason for testing that in 86 box instead of the ITX Llama is because Turbo Image does not work on the ITX Llama but it is the superior program to loading floppy disk images in DOS. But I figure I showed you both ways and also show you how they differ. So let's start on the ITX Llama with SHSUFDRV. I think I said that correctly. So basically you download it from the website and extract it to a directory in DOS. Let me list the directory contents. And there you go. The first file is SHSUFDRV. I also have the path to this folder listed in the path line of my autoexec.bat file, as you can see here. This will let me execute the program from anywhere in DOS. So let me go to where I have some floppy disk images. That's in my D drive. And I have them in this folder. Let me go here. I have some 360K floppy images for Commander Keen and also a 1.44 megabyte image for Warcraft. Let's test the Commander Keen image first. I'll go into the directory, list its contents, and here we are. So the usage for the program is you type SHSUFDRV space forward slash F colon, the name of the disk image, and hit enter. It'll use an available drive letter to mount the floppy disk image to. So now if I go to the F drive and I can list its contents, the D drive again. And to unload the program, I just type the same command, but with the forward slash U switch and the floppies will be unmounted. Let me try again with the Second disk, F drive, and there you go. Let me unload it again. So the reason why I don't like this program is because it really only works for programs that are stored in one disk. Any program that spans multiple disks for its installation, you're not going to be able to use this because the installation program is going to ask you to insert the next disk in the installation. And to do that, you have to exit the program, unload it, and reload the next disk. And by then, you already exited the program and we will have to start the installation again. That's where Turbo Image is superior. What Turbo Image does is load itself into memory as a TSR, which will give you the ability of bringing up a menu that will allow you to switch disks while the installation is running but it doesn't work on the ITX Llama. However, Turbo Image should be helpful for other retro PC owners. So I'll still show you how it's used. Hello everyone. And now you can see that I'm running 86 box now, and I'm going to show you how cool Turbo Image is. So here I'm on my C drive in my utilities directory and in there I have the folder where I have Turbo Image installed. So I'll go into that folder. and the command to run it is TI. Okay, so now Turbo Image is running and it tells me that Turbo Image is now resident, which means it's in memory and I can run it anytime I press the Control-Alt-T hotkey. So let me do that now, Control-Alt-T and I got a menu and I have different options here. I can toggle Turbo Image on and off. I can toggle the drive. I can write protect the drive. I can read the image with F5. F5 will be using a lot. I can write an image file. Let's say for instance, I make some changes on a floppy and I want to save those changes. I can write a new floppy image and I can uninstall Turbo Image with F10. This doesn't uninstall Turbo Image from your computer. What it will do is just like unload it from memory. So I don't like the way it's phrased with uninstall. It should say unload. Okay, so I'll hit escape to clear that menu. Now let me go to a folder that has some floppy images I want to use. So here in my D drive, 
fill. So yeah, these are the floppy images I want to use. And these are installation disks for my Magic 5. And Turbo Image will allow me to swap disks. So let me show you how that works. So I'll hit the Turbo Image hotkey with Control alt t So we have the Turbo Image menu now. And I'll hit F5 to read a uh, image file. Hit F5. In DOS, I don't have to be in the directory where the image files are. I can always navigate to that directory here. So I'll go to my D drive here in this menu and select disk one. Okay. And so what this will do is take over my A drive when a disk image is loaded. So I hit the IR. So I have the installation here. So I'll hit install. I'll select Sound Blaster, Speech Sound Blaster, 7, no on this. So I'll select my C drive to install and start the installation by confirming this. Yes. So now it's extracting disk 1. Now it's asking me for disk 2. That was super quick because the image file is in memory and not a slow floppy drive. So now here comes the cool part. I can bring up the Turbo Image menu, press F5 to... Select the new disk image, hit enter here, it loads the new disk image. And now I can continue the installation. This is why Turbo Image is so cool. And it's unfortunate that it doesn't work on the ITX Llama. Okay, now I'm asked for disk three, bring up the menu, hit F5, select disk three. Escape here and continue. And now I'm asked for disk 4, and I continue to do the same thing. So now you see how cool Turbo Image is and how it gives you basically the same functionality as a real floppy drive, allowing you to swap disks easily. I tried Turbo Image with several installation programs, and they worked on every single one of them. It wasn't a lot, probably like five in total, but I'm assuming there might come those situations where Turbo Image will not work. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.